God is good all the time, all the time. God is amazing God. He's an amazing Father. Um, we've, been, we've been talking about creating home. Everybody say home. Everybody say we are, no, I am home. I am home for God. I am home for people. We are home, a dwelling place, the atmosphere home um, in this place in the city of Claremont where, where we are called to host the presence of God, but in and through that, that we welcome people to encounter the presence of God. Amen? And that's, is, that's, a, that's a lifestyle of worship. Um, as we continue to live the lifestyle of worship, wherever we go, we, we build an altar of worship, we build an altar of sacrifice, and there He pours out His Spirit. He pours out the fire of His Spirit upon us that we will burn continuously. Amen? And that, that creates an atmosphere that attracts heaven to earth. So last week, we... Finally, it's not homey, but it's home. Uh, we have uh, t- we talked about home, and um, we have like 150 words up there of what home looks like, what heaven actually looks like, right? And we talked about that, and I hope that you had a chance to practice those things in the past week. So just briefly, what partner next to you? How did you practice home in the past week? All right? Just briefly talk to one another, and and we'll come back. All right. Okay. Anybody want to share what what element of home that you practiced this week? Anyone? (laughs) Hospitality. Great. Great. Um, Vulnerability. Okay, great. Wait. Hold on. How did hospitality play out? How, how did you practice that? Okay, okay. All right, fellowship, friendship, okay. How did you practice vulnerability? Great. That's great. That's great. Awesome. What else? Right. Uh, our f- family member, uh, fa- no, our family friends, um, just found uh, out that the mom um, is diagnosed with cancer, and she's starting to uh, chemotherapy. And this, so he's been actually helping um, the son, his friend, uh, just comforting him. So great. Uh, what else? I practiced actually. Ashley and I we partnered together, uh, and we practiced uh, fruit food. We practice food. We practice blessing. Um, so San Antonio High School, there's a continuation school down the block. It's, uh, it's kind of hidden on, um, on Indian Hill and San Jose, I believe. Um, but it's the, it's the continuation school that no one really cares about. Um, even the school district, uh, they don't really care about them. So um, we actually, I wanted to bring them something new. Um, so I asked Ashley, hey, Ashley, I want to bring boba drinks to teachers over there. Um, and Ashley really, like, so graciously donated 10 drinks, um, different kind of drinks. And we brought them, I brought them to them, and they were so blessed. And they said, we weren't even expecting that it would be all different kind of uh, things. It, we were okay, just one kind of drinks, but you guys just blessed us so much. And... Um, and they, uh, they're actually going through a transition of their uh, current principal moving out of them in the middle of semester. And an uh, uh, interim principal will come and, and all these different things. But they were so blessed. Everybody really had a great time just drinking boba. Uh, so thank you, Ashley. Uh, awesome. You know... I mentioned last week that uh, Colossians uh, 3, 2 says, set your minds on things above, not on things that are on the earth. Now, this is important because the, the truth is what we give attention to will determine the atmosphere that we create around us. As we 
pay attention to the things above, hospitality, vulnerability, comfort, care, um, partnership, uh, food. You know, all these different things, it's the, as we pay attention to those things, because it's not, it's not just what we want to do, but it's what God wants to release here on earth, so that there will be people who need to encounter the goodness and kindness of God. So what we pay attention to um, as we set our, our hearts above, uh, and, uh, minds on the things above, it's the, the atmosphere that we create around us. When we keep our eyes on the things above, everything, every thought, every action, every desire, every plan will be conditioned and governed by what's going on in heaven. Then our lives will start looking like what heaven looks like. Amen? That's what God all the things we want to we want to experience 150 of them many more we want to experience it right we want to live in 150 of all that every single day in multiple levels right right yes are we okay smile yeah yes yeah. thank you thank you Liz um, we want to but ultimately the purpose of us experiencing it is for us to be the door to release it, create an atmosphere around us so that the world that we encounter will be transformed so that they would also start reflecting the glory of God here on earth, right? I love um, the passion. I love passion translation. It says, it says this, the same verse, but it says, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm. How many of you like the word feast that's a good word right we're gonna have a feast a little bit later all right but feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm Amen. enemy wants to distract us with the things right but feast on the things above how many of you would say, oh, I'm craving, like, I don't know. Um, no, I'm always, cra I always crave boba. Spam, yes, yeah, spam. <laughs> no, I, no one would say, no one would say, I'm craving Taco Bell. After eating amazing five-star delicious food. No one will, cr no, okay, maybe a little bit. All right, Taco Bell, it tastes good. So I don't know. But we won't crave if we have like a really nice, beautiful steak dinner. And oh, I'm, I'm, I need to go to a, a, where is it? Yes, Texas Roadhouse. I need to go there. After nice steak dinner with nice rolls and you know just beautiful pies and all the good stuff after all that i would not even crave any junk food because my heart my well, not my heart but not my also my stomach will be filled and i because it's all filled with the great things right and i will not crave the wrong the bad things it's always being in that place completely saturated with heavenly things, feasting on the banqueting table that, that God has prepared for us. And who practiced best? Jesus. Every single day, every single moment, his minds were on the things above. His minds on the things that God, that God is doing. The only thing that, that no, the only thing that he sees is, is 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 what Father is doing. The only thing that he is hearing, listening to, is what the Father is saying. He is feasting that everything that the Father is releasing over him, and because of that, the heaven was attracted to him. Right. Everything that he did, every teaching, every message, every uh, signs and wonders and miracles was done in a way because the heaven was attracted because of the, the atmosphere that Jesus was creating. And when he, the atmosphere that he created was the safe place where the sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors could come in without being judged or shamed, actually sit down and have the same feasting on the same thing that Jesus was releasing through him. 
right? That's the life that we get to live here on earth. It's not just, it's more than, this is great. What we do every Sunday is great. I love it. We all love it, right? But ultimately, we need to take this, this feast, this banqueting table outside so that people outside could actually taste and see that God is good. As much as the goodness of God is chasing after us, goodness of God is chasing after those who don't know him. Goodness of God is chasing after the city of Claremont. City of Laverne, Ratchet, Cucamaca, Upland, wherever we are coming from. The, si- the goodness of God, wants to, he wants to prove himself that he is good to the world. Amen. And we need to take the banqueting table, set it outside, welcome people. Hey, you want to join? Let's eat. Right? So, that's a good news. Amen. Amen. Anyone hungry? I am. <laughs> All right. So as we continue to talk about uh, creating an atmosphere at home, I've been actually wrestling with God uh, whether I need to talk about this message or bring this message back. It's the message about Naoth, right? Um, actually, I didn't want to because I was like, God, we have heard, we have, we have done this message many times. We have heard this message many times. Do you want me to do this again? Again? And then God said, let me ask you this. Are you practicing Naoth? And I was like, okay. All right. Good reminder. All right. So for those of you who have heard the message of Naoth, I want you to open your ears and open your heart for it. Because there are elements that we need to learn to become Naoth every single day practically. Right? For those of you who have no idea what Naoth means, <laughs> today's the day. Right? So, here we go. Naoth. Everybody say Naoth. Naoth. Okay? So Hebrew meaning of Naoth is the place of eminence, place of excellence. It's a place of celebration with praises. It's a place of beauty, again, the glory, splendor of God, but, at, but also it's a place that beautifies everything in it. So it's a place of transformation, right? How many of you like the sound of that, right? It's a place of habitation. Everybody say habitation. Habitation. It's the habitation, dwelling place, abiding, the place of abiding, meaning that it's the Spirit of God coming and making that place home. Naoth is home, right? Now, the word Naoth is only mentioned once in the Bible. And there are no records whatsoever outside the Bible. No historical records, no geographical, no geo, geo, geograph, thank you, record <laughs> of this place, Naoth. Um, but it's always mentioned, well, in the Bible, it's, all, it's, it's, it's not just Naoth, but it's Naoth in Rama or Naoth near Rama. Rama is the place, is a actually a birthplace, a hometown for, uh, for Prophet Samuel, and we're going to get to that. Um, but um, it's a, so since there are no records of um, this place on a map, um, some say that it's, it's more than a geographical location on the map. It's actually a spiritual atmosphere created by a group of people, a, a school of prophets. Right? So Naoth is this amazing place mentioned only in once in the Bible and, and uh, no other uh, places. So combining all this, uh, we can say Naoth is a spiritual, uh, prophetic atmosphere that displays the glory of God, the excellence of God. We, we talked 
uh, month about the excellence of God. Was it last year? Yes, because um, it's only February. Splendor of God, the whole year, the excellence of God. So it's the place where we get to experience and encounter excellence of God in, in multiple levels with people praising and worshiping God nonstop. And because of His presence, powerful presence in it, everything in it, everyone in that place becomes beautiful and glorious, reflecting what heaven looks like here on earth. Again, attracting the Spirit of God to come and dwell and make home in it. Right? That's what Naoth is. Right? So as we, as we are talking about creating an atmosphere at home, that's what God is calling us to be. As a church community together, that's what the place of excellence, how many of you uh, ex encountered the excellence of God in this morning, right? And we praised and worshiped God with power. It's just, it's just so much energy going on in this place. It's a place of worship. But also, it's the place where mourning turning into dancing, right? It's the broken heart being healed and it's the, it's, it's instead of taking the brokenness and pain, no, 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 we're coming out of that place and we are becoming glorious because of the glory that has been moving in and through us, right? That's not just, uh, that's us, right? That's life as one. That's what God has called us to be collectively. But I want to say that that's what we need to be individually wherever we go. Everybody say, I am Naoth. Okay? We need to be Naoth wherever we are. All right? So let's take it further. And we're going to go to 1 Samuel 10. Samuel says this. Um, and there, as soon as you come, uh, he's Samuel, the prophet Samuel was born in the city of Ramah. Um, right here, he's actually with, with uh, Saul. Um, and he is anointing Saul to be a king over Israel. And he's telling Saul right now to go and meet uh, this group of prophets. Right? The group of prophets that... Um, the, the Samuel himself was was uh, was over. Was uh, he was he was he was training them, right? Um, and Saul was actually super confused in this in this moment because he came to Samuel because he was he was uh, his father sent him to to look for a donkey. Like imagine you coming to somebody because you need to find a donkey, right? I know that you are a seer. I know that you are a prophet. Can you point me to the lost donkeys of my dad? I need to find these donkeys. And all of a sudden, everything changed. And now this prophet is saying that, oh, no, you are to be appointed as a king over Israel. Can you imagine the confusion? Now, I didn't come to become a king. I came for donkeys. Can you just point me to donkeys and find someone else for, to be a king? Right? And he said at this moment, he actually said the same thing that Gideon said. No, I'm, the, I'm from the smallest clan. I'm from the smallest tribe. And I'm, the, I, I'm not worthy to be a king. Right? And in the midst of all this confusion, that's what, what Samuel is uh, uh, he's pointing. He's pointing um, Sam, uh, Sa uh, Saul to the prophets. Uh, this is a promise that he's releasing over Saul. And it says, There, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them, prophesying. And then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now, when these signs meet you, do what your hand uh, finds uh, to do, for God is with you. And when he turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. 
when they came to Gil, Gilbert, yeah. Uh, behold, a group of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. And all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets, and the people said to one another, What has come over the son of Kish? Is Saul uh, also among the prophets? Now, this is uh, a place of Naoth, the group of prophets. Uh, so let's go back. So here, uh, Prophet Samuel is pointing Saul to Naoth, right? And what's the first thing that it says? He will meet a group of prophets coming down from a high place with instruments, praising and worshiping God, prophesying, right? They are united. And so the first thing that we have to understand, Naoth, is it's a place of community. It's a place of fellowship of those who are united. Everybody say united. People who are united for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to seek God's presence together as one, right? And there, they would, with all these instruments and their voices continuously, as they, as they walked down from the high place, they were coming down and continuously creating an atmosphere of worship and adoration, affection, praise, uh, being completely focused on God and God alone and never be distracted of what's going on around them, Right? It's a place of community. It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of worship. It's a place of praise, right? It says, just a, a verse before, it says, um, there, there is a, a Philistine army camp uh, right near them, So, mean, which means that the enemy was right in front of them, but it, it did not distract their focus, Right? Their life was on the line, but it, not, it did not distract them. Like, like what I shared uh, just before, the sickness and, and, and death and the bad news and all these troubles right in front of me, but, but what it's saying is they were not distracted. They were completely focused, zero focus on God's goodness and kindness, and they continuously offered worship and praise to the Lord, Right? They were gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. And how many of you know that when you, once you start gazing upon the beauty of the Lord, then nothing else will be able to distract you from it. Because He is so absolutely glorious and beautiful. Right? And they were gazing upon the beauty of, Lord, beauty of the Lord because it was so... They were prioritizing His... Uh, presence more than anything else, right? More than their life. And they were prophesying, right? What is prophecy? Prophecy is more than just telling the future. Prophesying, it comes from a, a deep place of intimacy with God. There were the closeness with God. They were leaning against God's heart that they were able to hear His heartbeat so closely. It's a place of intimacy in the presence of God. And all they did was to seek his heart and hear his voice and, and declare his plans over them. So they, were, they created this, this um, I don't know, it's just a vortex, right? Like you are surrounded by this vortex and nothing could get, get into it. Right? No attacks of the enemy could get into it because you created this vortex of, of atmosphere of heaven right there, prophesying what God is thinking. And he's releasing, they're releasing that. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practice of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And right here, this is heaven right here. Right? The, the part of prophesying, again, hearing God's heart. You know, 1 Samuel uh, 3, 1, it says, um, the voice of God was rare 
in those days. Before Samuel, voice of God was rare. Even the visions were rare in those days. So Samuel, born actually out of the promise, the miracles and signs and wonders of Hannah uh, giving birth, um, coming out of the barrenness um, into the city of Ramah. And he was raised right in, in the house of prophets. And his heart was to, was to uh, reestablish God's voice to the people, training them to prioritize God's presence, prioritize God's voice, um, which it was, it was, it was, a, it was this, this place of, of training school, right? Are we okay with that? Yeah, training school, being equipped, um, Samuel um, taking a place where he's mentoring, fathering, other prophets, so that collectively together they would continuously hear the voice of God, see God's heart, and release and declare God's plans and purposes, right? So naturally, it becomes a place of encounter, right? Um, it, come, it becomes a place of encounter, the supernatural encounter with the power of God's presence that completely transforms and beautifies and upgrades everyone who comes in contact in that place, right? That's the place of nail. Now, just look at these things. I'm glad that we, there's a, the, the, uh, the fellowship, right? Um, the, the community of fellowship together, Purp uh, with one purpose, coming together to praise God, can, can I say that that's, that's who Life as One is, right? That's what we experienced this morning, right? With one purpose, nothing else matter, complete focus, no distraction of the goodness and kindness of God. And we speak His life, we speak His heart, releasing His purpose. We pray together, releasing His hope, His joy, His, His life, and life abundant. That's who we are. And we are being equipped super to see here. Um, I think la last week we had Ken sharing. Uh, last week we had Ken sharing uh, the word of God. Evelyn started uh, uh, spontaneous prophetic worship songs, leading us to the deeper place of God's heart. Again, encountering His place, His His presence with us. Right. That's who we are, but at the same time, that's who we individually need to be at where we are, wherever God sends us to go, right? Are we creating a, a safe place where people could come and have fellowship with us? Are we continuously, instead of being distracted by what is not, but actually we would give God his uh, praises and worship that will become our lens of love, so that we will actually start seeing who people are in, in the goodness and kindness of God instead of looking at focusing on what they are not and bringing transformation of heart because we are encouraging them, because we are training them to see what God sees in them, right? We need to be that people at wherever we are. Is it okay, right? We need to... We need to um, be the doorway for people to encounter the goodness of God and ultimately to actually see God's promises being fulfilled with acceleration. Um, it says, uh, let's go back, right? Um, it says, all right, let's see. So as soon as he didn't, Samuel did not even get to Naoth yet, but as soon as he turned, no, Saul, to get to, with the same S name, Saul, to get to uh, Naoth, God gave him another heart. Immediately, there's a suddenly, there's a quickness in, in, in God's promises being fulfilled. Remember, Saul was, was not sure about who God called him to be. He was confused. He didn't want to be. Like, 
what is this that you're saying to me? But immediately, he, God gave him another heart, a heart that was fit for a king, right? And every promise that Samuel spoke to Saul came to pass that day. He did not wait a long time to see fulfillment of God's promise over his life. It happened instantly by being with a group of people who love God's presence. How? Because the culture of the kingdom of God is caught than taught, right? So when you are with a group of people who simply love God and love one another, whose desire is not about this world, but everyone's heart and mind is set on the things above, all of a sudden you experience the suddenly of God with acceleration, right? You experience the suddenly of God with acceleration, right? I was sharing with, with a couple people um, that we were talking about the gifts of God. We were talking about the, uh, the speaking in tongues and all that stuff. And I was sharing that I waited. Um, I waited ten, over 10 years for that gift. Um, 10 years was a long time. Um, I grew up in a, in, a, in a church where no one spoke in tongues. There was no Holy Spirit supernatural activity whatsoever. Um, and when I actually started desiring was when I met Ellen. Because Ellen, um, we went to, uh, we, were, we, we were serving a Korean church, Korean-American church back then, and, and she invited me to her uh, church's early morning service. It was like 5 o'clock in the morning in Fullerton. I, live, I lived in, in Claremont. I had to wake up er, super early in the morning to get to that place. Holy moly. It was a miracle that I actually got to that place. It was love. It was love. Because to be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't really all about like the praying part. I was all about Ellen, you know. <laughs> but I was there with her, and I saw her praying like continuously in spirit, in tongues. And I wasn't sure what was going on. I didn't know what she was saying. But it was something about that really put a desire in my heart God it's hard for me to pray for five minutes right I feel like praying praying and praying and praying and I felt like oh 30 minutes passed and I look at my watch a oh, one minute passed right well I'm looking at Ellen she's praying like so in fire I, I felt like God I want that so from that point 10 years have passed and nothing happened, right? And I had some frustrated conversation with God, I tell you. Um, and I compromised a lot, saying that, oh, I don't need uh, to speak in tongue. I have other things. And it was, it was actually me trying to compromise, protecting my heart, not feeling like God is not answering my prayer and all that stuff. Um, but I came... I went to this retreat. I was, part, I was part of this retreat, annual retreat that I was serving. I was serving as a, as a, as a, as a director. And, and the presence of God just fell on this, on this, this retreat. It was, it was a supernatural retreat, like literally. Supernatural retreats. So people were being freed and people were being activated. Um, we're talking about um, junior high kids to high school seniors and they can get wild and they can get rowdy and they can they never listen to adults, but it was such a supernatural moment when the presence of God fell and we were just continuously sold out for God. And I was passing through uh, these group of sisters praying, and I was passing through them to get to my students, a troubled one, who give me all the trouble in the world, and I saw him. Um, and he was praying, and I, I, I passed these ladies to get to this guy, and I started praying, and all of a sudden, 
I'll start speaking in gibberish. And I was like, ooh, what's going on? And I, did, I didn't know what, it, what that it was. I, it's like, okay, no, let's pray. Uh, and I started praying in English, the words that make sense to me. And I passed by again to get to another group to pray for them. And I passed by these group of ladies, and I started speaking in, again in tongues. And I was like, oh, oh. And after everything was done, I went to these ladies, sisters, and te- uh, there's a group leaders, the teachers, and I went to them, hey, what, what, what were you guys praying for? Because I was passing by you, and all of a sudden, I, I started, I received a gift of tongue. I waited for 10 years, and I passed by you guys, and I started, I received it. What did you guys pray for? And they said, we were praying for the Spirit of God to fall upon people, to be activated, to speak in tongues. Right? It was awesome. And it wasn't just me. There were a bunch of high school kids and junior high kids started speaking in tongues and and walking in signs and wonders and miracles. And they were praying for people, their friends, and their friends are being healed. Like literally, the scars are gone. And there were like people, are, it was a wild party. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit comes, it becomes a party. Are we okay with that? Right? All that, right? That's what God is calling us to create, to be Naoth at where we are, so that people can experience and encounter goodness and kindness of God with his promises being fulfilled with acceleration. Just by passing by a group of sisters praying for the activation, passing by them, and people get activated. Can you imagine the impact that this kind of place can make at where you are today? Right? Let's continue. 1 Samuel 19, it says this. Now David fled and escaped, and he came to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and lived at Naoth. And it was told, Saul, uh, behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. It's not a messenger. He was sending people to kill him. Uh, yeah, assassins. Um, uh, and when they saw the company, so these guys were coming to kill David, but when they saw a company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel was standing as head over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. When he was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they also prophesied. And Saul sent s- messengers again the third time, and they also prophesy. Can you imagine how frustrated Saul at this point? Like, holy, what is going on? Right? And then he himself went to Ramah and came to the great well that is in Saku, and he asked, where are Samuel and David? And one said, behold, they are in Na- Naoth and Ramah. And he went there to Naoth and Ramah, And the Spirit of God came upon him also. And as he went, he prophesied until he came to Naoth in Mama. And he, too, stripped off his clothes. And he, too, prophesied before Samuel and lay naked all that day and night. Thus it is said, is Samuel also among the prophets? No. Is Saul also among the prophets? (laughs) Yeah. Is Saul also among the prophets? Right? So, David is on the run. Did, like Saul, he had spears in his hand trying to pin David. And that's crazy. To pin him on the wall, right? It's crazy that David is eluded. Like, I don't know how he did it, like, but maybe matrix mode and all that stuff. But, he, but it continued. Even after... Uh, Saul gave his word, okay, I will not hurl, hurt 
David, and he made this promise to his son, Jonathan, but then again, the, the evil spirit came upon Saul, and, and he, he wanted to kill him. So David ran from, from Saul and ca uh, came to Samuel, right? He was taking, he was seeking safety. He's seeking refuge, uh, uh, security uh, as he came to Samuel. It was, it, it, was a, it was a refuge within authentic relationship built um, and, and divine appointments of God. Right? Because Samuel was the one who appointed David to be king, to be the next king, right? And so David came, found refuge with Samuel, and Samuel it says, let him to Naoth. Right? David shared everything that was happening to him, that everything that Samuel oh no, not Samuel, everything that King Saul did to David. And he was sharing all that. Knowing, believing, trusting the relationship, the authentic relationship that he had with Samuel. Who Samuel was to him. And he was sharing all that, knowing that, that what, whatever that he experienced with, with Saul, he would not experience with Samuel here. Right? Instead, he would receive encouragement. He would receive support. He would actually receive true love. That's something that he thought that he would receive from Saul, but no, he is coming to Samuel and he's seeking that, right? He, didn't, he knew that he didn't have to be on guard with Samuel just like he did with Saul, right? But also he knew that he would receive wisdom, he would receive direction, he would receive solutions for what he need to, needed to do, right? How many of us today need some, some uh, Holy Spirit wisdom and direction for the things that we're facing today, right? All of us, right? The question is, where do we go to? Please don't say Google, right? <laughs> right? Or Reddit. My, my, Ellie goes to Reddit. Like, she has things to find. She goes to Reddit. Search in Reddit. I don't know what Reddit is, <laughs> right? Um, but... Who do we go to, right? But here's what's interesting, right? It says, Samuel, as David was sharing all that, hap that happened to him, to Samuel, it says, Samuel took him to Naoth and, and Ramah. We didn't see Samuel talking to David about what he needed to do, Right? Instead, Samuel took him to Naoth, meaning Samuel did not try to be a solution for David. How many of us, when friends come to us, that we want to be a solution for them? We want to give our solution to them, right? But Samuel, instead, he took David to Naoth, meaning that he simply led him to the only one who can be the solution for David, right? It's a Samuel practicing great humility, giving honor to God, saying, your problem, I cannot solve it. I won't even dare to take place that God deserves. I will, I will come under the lordship of God, the sovereignty of God, and I will lay myself before him. I will lay your problems before him so that he can be the solution. He can be the provider. He can be the healer for you. And he can be the good shepherd for the next steps in your life. Right? That's a great humility, practicing the culture of honor in that place. And actually that released healing and restoration because David was running away from the relationship filled with pride, rejection, and fear, and absolutely no honor or respect, right? So by David actually seeing prophet Samuel 
laying down his life before the sovereignty of God and leading him to, instead of him being the solution, leading him to Naoth, he is receiving healing and restoration, knowing this is what kingdom relationships should, should look like. Right? That David was being realigned again to the kingdom values, the kingdom cultures. Right? As we go on, we see Saul sent three times his assassins, the killers, but they all fell under the power of God's spirit, and they started prophesying, which is great. It's the transformation. Again, the Naoth is a transformation that beautifies, right? The, tra the, the place of transformation, transform, uh, uh, that the place that beautifies everyone in it. So these people come with evil intention to kill David, but the presence of God in it was so powerful, it disarms the evil intention of people, right? And immediately they were released from the bondage of sin and death, and every one of them got a new assignment in life, listening to what God is saying and declaring the kingdom of God. Every single assassin, every single killer, trained killers, or maybe even people who fought alongside of David. Because David was the commander over Saul's army. So imagine the, the heart torn. The, they, were, they were in love. They loved David, but now they are being sent to kill David. They imagine the weight of sin in their heart, but now they are becoming free to actually become part of this relationship that they experienced before. Right? And now finally, Saul, the same thing happened. Right? Even before he came to Naoth, he was struck by the Spirit of God, ended up laying naked on the ground before Samuel prophesying. Again, evil being disarmed, his agenda completely bowing down before the power of God in complete surrender. How about we walk and create this place of Nea, create this atmosphere of Nea, that as we go to places, as we meet with people, as we release heaven and earth, every intention of, of evil would actually be disarmed. You know, I, it hurts my heart and it actually frustrates me and angers me whenever I receive from a notification email from the city, oh, this place has been broken into. That place has been broken into. I get emails like two, three times a week of all these businesses around Claremont being broken into. Right? But how about us walking and creating a place where the evil intention of the enemy actually being disarmed and people who actually come in wanting to break in and for some reason they were hit by the presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit being convicted of their evil intention saying, oh, what am I doing? No, this is not who I am. I don't want to partner with this. I don't want to end up in jail. No, no, no. No, I'm, I'm going to walk away because this is not what I want to be. Right? How about we actually create that place in the city of Claremont, in the city wherever you live, and there's zero crime happening because of what we create in partnership with God. Right? How about students, when you go to school, or, or who are, like when you go to places, people who are living under the bondage of death, wanting to kill themselves, wanting, going for something that, would, uh, that they would find uh, hope or, you know, uh, um, escape, right? They, kids go to, it's crazy that there are so many kids doing drugs, so many kids dying of drug uh, overdose. Why? Because they are living under the weight of brokenness and shame. But you go in, you release kingdom, you release the atmosphere of Naoth, and they come and come into the, the atmosphere that you create, and they find home, they find comfort, 
they find healing. They find restoration. They find, instead of rejection, instead of pain, they feel accepted. They feel seen. They feel loved. So that they, don't, they no longer have to go for something of this world to, to feel loved. But they actually, like, I don't know what is in you, but you go through similar things. I know you go through hard things, but you are different. How do I know this secret that you are carrying? How about we do that, right? Naoth, there's so much that God has released over us. These things that we are seeing on this board, it's only a glimpse of what heaven looks like. But these things will actually be so much for the people around us because they are in desperate need to taste something different. The world is feeding every day of the things that are broken. I stop listening to the, to the news. No, I, I'm, I still listen to the news. I'm, I'm actually filtering things of the things that I'm listening to. Because I'm, I'm, I get like, holy moly, take me, God, <laughs> today. <laughs> And God is saying, no, have you done all these? Have you displayed these to people that you love, that you get to meet, right? I don't want us to think that Naoth is a place within this building because it is, but it is more than that. But the thing is, if we only think that Naoth is the atmosphere that we create inside the building, it means that there are so many people outside missing out the opportunity to experience what kingdom looks like. When we come here every Sunday and do what we do every Sunday and we get excited for the things that God is doing and as soon as we go outside, we leave this here until the next Sunday we come in, people are missing out. The world is missing out. And God is saying, are you becoming Naoth? And I think that's the message that God is sharing with us. As I was wrestling with God, God, another message of Naoth? The question is, are you creating Naoth everywhere you go? There is, this is a season of grace. Everybody say grace. grace. This is a season of open doors. Everybody say open doors. Open doors. You know, in in um in First Samuel three, I believe it says, um, yeah, uh, no, First Samuel two. I I shared this. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall go in and out before my anointed forever. God is raising up priests that would minister unto the Lord, created a, 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 a space and an atmosphere of heaven and earth, and we will be able to go in and out as sons and daughters of God, bringing everything in the kingdom of God and bringing to where we are, releasing it so that heaven will invade earth, right? And there, people will taste and see that the Lord is good. It's more than, it's the, it's, it's more than our uh, uh, plausible words and it's anything that, the arguments that we can bring. No arguments about God can change people's heart, right? No arguments about theology can change people's heart. But when people actually encounter what heaven looks like through what we create, they will be drawn, naturally drawn to what God is doing. So what if we create Naoth 
wherever we go, right? So here's something for us. And then we're li- uh, running a little late. But um, just think about people or think about place, you know, that you have relationship with. You know, knowing their circumstances and knowing their needs, right? Think about those people. And in what ways can you be nailed for them this week so that they can encounter the reality of God's kingdom and God's love, right? Who are those people? Who are those situations? Who are those places that you can be nailed, releasing kingdom here on earth, all right? So just quickly, five minutes, go and talk, and we'll come back, and we'll pray. All right, let's, uh, let's pray together. Hmm. Let's pray together. One thing, well, let, before we pray, let me actually say, share this, something that God's been keep telling me, keep reminding me. I don't know what it is, but something about Asbury Revival that happened one year ago, God is keep reminding me of that as if like that has been a doorway for all these other revivals to come. The revival, the waves of the revival is waiting to be released. Can we say amen for that? Right? He is saying it's started. That's a model when we start worshiping, when we start surrendering, when we start honoring, when we start putting him at his place instead of us trying to be God, right? Amen. And God will release His Spirit upon us. And we will see the greatest revival that we have never seen before. Are we ready for that? He is looking for people to be ready to carry His presence. So, Father God, can you just put your hands upon your heart? Father God, today we surrender. We acknowledge who you are over our lives, and we surrender our own agenda, our own desire, our own future, our own plans. We surrender before you. And we, as we lay down before you as a sacrifice to you, we ask you that you would pour your fresh anointing over us upon this sacrifice. And we ask you that you would teach us and equip us to create an atmosphere of naoth, the heaven and earth, so that wherever we go, that we would introduce the power of the kingdom of God to everyone that we encounter. And we ask you, let it start with my life today. Let it start with my family today. And wherever we go, we want your kingdom come, your will be done, And everybody say, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.